Hello cadets! In episode 1, we discuss about topics regarding probation and preliminary topics under non-institutional correction subject. In this episode, what we are going to do is to review the remaining community-based rehabilitation programs under the correction pillar. Since we are already done discussing probation, our discussion today will focus on parole, absolute pardon, conditional pardon, reprieve, amnesty, commutation of sentence, and good conduct time allowance. So to start with, let us first discuss what is parole. Parole comes from the French word parole, means voice or spoken words. It is the process of suspending the sentence of a convict after having served the minimum of his sentence without granting him pardon and the prescribing term upon which the sentence shall be suspended. Parole is very different from probation. Probation is granted to those persons already been convicted of a crime but does not serve the sentence yet. But in parole, what is needed is that for a person or for a convict to be uh, qualified uh, to apply for parole is that, that the convict should already serve the minimum of his sentence. This is one of the, one of the uh, most important requirements that must be met. Let us go to the historical background of parole. Let us start with the father of modern penology. The father of modern penology is Alexander Makonochi. Makonochi was um, the superintendent of the penal colony at Norfolk Island in Australia who introduced the Marx system. The Marx system is a humane system in which a prisoner is required to earn a number of marks based on proper department, labor, and study in order to entitle him for ticket for leave or conditional release, which is similar to parole. So basically, Marx system is somewhat like a merit and demerit system. So if a person exhibits good behavior inside the penal institution, this will entitle him for leave or conditional release. That's what Marx system is all about. But Marx system was modified by Walter Crofton. So Walter Crofton named it as the Irish system, which is a modification from Akonochi's Marx system. Next is Sibylon Brockway. Sibylon Brockway was a Michigan penologist who is given credit for implementing the first parole in the United States. He was the first superintendent of Elmira Reformatory in New York. Take note that Elmira Reformatory, this came out in the board examination. Elmira Reformatory is the forerunner of modern penology because it had all the elements of a modern system. Parole system in the Philippines came into existence by the passage of what we call as the indeterminate sentence law. When I say indeterminate sentence law, I'm referring to Republic Act 4103. Aristo Minor, which is one day to one month. Aristo Mayor, which is one month and one day to six months. Uh, Prussian Correctional, six months and one day to six years. Prussian Mayor, six years and one day to 12 years. Reclusion Temporal, 12 years and one day to 20 years. And uh, uh, Reclusion Perpetual, which is 20 years and one day to 40 years. So those are examples of what we call as indeterminate sentence. And these indeterminate sentence are embodied within Republic Act 4103, known as the indeterminate sentence law. So if I'm talking about, for example, um, pressure correctional, which is six months and one day to six years, the minimum sentence is the six months and one day. And the maximum sentence is uh, six years. The parole system in the Philippines is carried out by the boards of pardon and parole, or the BPP. On your screen, you can find the difference between parole and probation. In terms of the granting authority, probation is granted by the court, while parole is exercised by the executive branch, specifically the boards of pardon and parole. Probation, on the other hand, is granted to an offender immediately after conviction. Take note, based on the discussion that we had in, in episode one, probation shall be granted before the person is brought to jail or prison, meaning before the person serves his sentence, that's the time that probation shall be granted. Once the person already served his sentence, the serving of the sentence will disqualify him from availing the probation. A person who is on probation is known as probationer, while the person under parole is known as a parolee. Take note also that probation shall only be enjoyed once. Once he committed another offense, he will no longer be qualified to, to apply for probation, simply because probation shall only be applied once. 
Parole, on the other hand, can be granted more than once depending on good behavior during imprisonment. Now, let's go to qualifications for parole. One of the qualifications is that the convict is confined in jail or prison to serve an indeterminate prison sentence, the maximum period of which exceeds one year. Those persons whose punishment is aristo menor up to aristo menor, because aristo menor is one day to 30 days, while um, aristo mayor is one month and one day to six months. So basically, if a person is punished with prison sentence within aristo menor or aristo mayor, these convicts are not qualified for parole. Because what is required in parole again is that the prison sentence of the convict should exceed at least one year. Other qualification is that the convict should serve the minimum period of the said sentence less than the good conduct time allowances. So if a person has good behavior, just like the Marx system, if a person has good behavior inside the penal institution or inside the jail, there's a corresponding deduction of days per month which will be granted to the convict, depending again on the good behavior. Next qualification is that there is a reasonable probability that if released, he will become law-abiding and his release will not be incompatible with the interest and welfare of society. Disqualifications. Those whose maximum term of imprisonment does not exceed one year or are with a definite sentence. So basically, as I have said a while ago, is that parole shall only be given to those persons serving indeterminate sentence. When I say David's sentence, these are types of sentences that does not have minimum and maximum sentences. So what is given by the court is that a number of years only. Like say, for example, a person is required to stay inside the prison for 10 years. That's a definite sentence. But when I say indeterminate sentence, like say, for example, a person will be serving a minimum of five years and one day with, to the maximum of 10 years. That's an example of indeterminate sentence. Next disqualification, they're suffering from any mental disorder which will be attested by a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Next is those whose conviction is on appeal, okay? So if a person will exercise his right to appeal or will appeal his case to a higher court, that will disqualify him to apply for parole. Next, those who have pending criminal case for an offense committed while serving sentence. Those persons convicted of offenses punished with reclusion perpetua. Take note, cadets, you have to memorize the number of days and years of imprisonment starting from Aristo Minor after reclusion perpetua. Also, these persons have been convicted of treason, piracy, rebellion, sedition, or espionage, terrorism, plunder, and transnational crimes are, do, are disqualified to avail for parole. Also, these persons who are habitual delinquents, those who escaped from confinement or those who evaded the sentence, those who were granted conditional pardon and violated any of the terms thereof shall be disqualified from parole. The Board of Pardons and Parole is created by virtue of Act Number 4103 or known as the Indeterminate Sentence Law. And this agency is under the Department of Justice tasked to uplift and redeem valuable human resources to economic usefulness and to prevent unnecessary and excessive deprivation of personal liberty by way of parole through executive clemency. The reason why I include the address in the filing of petition is simply because in the previous criminology licensure examination, this type of question came up. Formal petition for executive clemency should be addressed as follows. The President of the Philippines, through the Chairman, Board of Pardons and Parole, DOJ Agencies Building, NIA, NIA Road, Corner East Avenue, Diliman, Quezon City. Note, however, that in Section 39, any violation of the terms and conditions appearing in parole supervision program shall be immediately reported by the provision and parole officer to the board. And upon receipt of an infraction report, the board may order the arrest or recommitment of the client. So just like probation, parole also is attached with various conditions. And these conditions must be followed by a parolee. Because once a parolee will deviate or will um, violate one of these conditions, there's a possibility that the person or that the, the parolee will be ordered to be arrested and will be recommitted 
back to jail or prison. So those are the topics under parole. I think one of the things that you have to remember in this is that parole shall be granted to a person being convicted of a crime who already served the minimum sentence. Probation, as discussed in episode one, shall be granted to those persons before they served their sentence inside jail or prison. So let us now proceed to other community-based rehabilitation program. Let us proceed to executive clemency. Executive clemency refer to absolute pardon, conditional pardon, and commutation of sentence as may be granted by the President of the Philippines upon the recommendation of the boards of the Board of Pardon and Parole. Who will grant executive clemency? In our Philippine Constitution, it mandates that executive clemency shall only be ex exercised, shall only be exercised exclusively by the president. But then again, the exercise of the executive clemency must be upon the recommendation of the Board of Pardons and Parole. So upon the recommendation of the Board of Pardons and Parole, the president can grant pardons, commute sentences, or defer the implementation of sentences. Now let us go now to pardon. What is pardon? It is a form of executive clemency granted by the president of the Philippines as a privilege to a convict as a discretionary act of grace. So take note again that the only person authorized by our constitution or authorized by our law to grant executive clemency or pardon is no other than the president himself. Pardon is an act of grace. The legislative nor the judiciary branch of the government has no power to set conditions or establish procedures for the exercise of the presidential prerogative. So once the president will exercise his pardoning power, such will be unquestionable either to the legislative or to the judiciary branch of the government. There are only two types of pardon. One is absolute pardon. The other is conditional pardon. The only difference between the two is that in absolute pardon, there is total extinction of criminal liability. While in conditional pardon, there is only partial extinction of criminal liability. In absolute pardon, there is no conditions. Conditional pardon, on the other hand, is somewhat like the same with parole and probation because it is entwined with conditions or it involves conditions. So once a person is granted with conditional pardon, there are conditions that are set to be followed by the person who has been granted with, with such executive clemency. But take note, even if the pardoning power of the president cannot be disputed by the judiciary and the legislative branches of the government, there are limitations as set by the 1987 Constitution. These are, there are limitations of the pardoning power of the executive branch. These are the limitations. It may be exercised only after conviction by final judgment except amnesty. Pardon shall never be granted before or during the trial. It should be exercised only after conviction. It may not be exercised over legislative or civil contempt, such as refusing to answer a proper question as a witness in a case. The president has also limitation of his pardoning power in case of violation of election law or rules and regulations without favorable recommendations of the COMELEC. It may not be exercised for offenses in impeachment cases. It cannot be exercised to violation tax laws. It cannot absolve convict of civil liability. It cannot restore public offices forfeited. So those are the differences between absolute pardon and conditional pardon. Again, when we say absolute pardon, there are no conditions being set. While conditional pardon, there are uh, this is a type of pardon which is entwined with conditions. Now let us go now to commutation of sentence. Commutation of sentence is the act of the president changing, reducing, or mitigating a heavier sentence to a lighter one or a, or a longer term into a shorter term. It may alter death sentence to life sentence or life sentence to a term of years. It does not forgive the offender but merely to reduce the penalty pronounced by the court. So, when we say commutation of sentence, it barely is the reduction of a sentence from a heavier 
to a lighter one. Say, for example, instead of death penalty, the sentence can be commuted to life imprisonment. Or from life imprisonment, it can be commuted to uh, the next lower level, or the next lighter uh, sentence, which is reclusion temporal. Next is reprieve. Reprieve or respite is the withholding of the sentence for an interval of time, a postponement of execution or a temporary suspension of execution. Republic Act 7659, known as the death penalty law, once a person has been found to be guilty beyond reasonable doubt and the an original trial court has the verdict that the person should be punished with capital punishment, automatically the case will be put into reprieve, meaning there will be a temporary suspension of the execution of the punishment will not be executed because it still have to be reviewed again by the Supreme Court. Next is amnesty. Amnesty is a general pardon extended to a group of persons such as political offenders purposely to bring about the return of dissidents to their home and to restore peace and order in the community. What is political offenders? Political offenders are those members of the Abu Sayyaf group or members of the Nash uh, New People's Army members of the uh, BIFF and other rebuild groups in the Philippines. There are three things that you have to remember regarding amnesty. One is that it is a general pardon extended to a group of persons, meaning it shall not be extended individually, but rather to a group of persons. Number two, who are this group of persons? This group of persons refer to political offenders. When I say political offenders, I am referring to those persons who are members of the Abu Sayyaf group, members of the MILF, members of the MLF, members of the New People's Army, or any rebuild groups in the Philippines. Number three is that, although it is exercised by the president or the chief executive, before the chief executive can exercise amnesty to a group of persons, there is a requirement that there has to be a concurrence of Congress, meaning there has to be an agreement between those public officials who belong inside the Congress. Amnesty can be availed before, during, and after the trial of the case, or even after conviction. This is a big difference from other community-based rehabilitation um, programs. Because in probation, parole, conditional and absolute pardon, it needs to be given to those persons who already been convicted of an offense. So to have a clear understanding between amnesty and pardon, you may refer to your screen. So again, pardon is given individually, right? It shall only be given to one person. But amnesty shall be given to a group of political offenders. When I say political offenders or political prisoners, I'm referring to those persons who are members of the rebel groups of the Philippines. Pardon is exercised when a person is already convicted. This is what I have told you a while ago. While amnesty may be given before trial, during, or after investigation is done. In pardon, once the president wants to exercise his pardoning power, there's no need for the concurrence of Congress. Unlike amnesty, that there has to be a concurrence before the president can grant amnesty to a group of prisoners. Pardon is granted for infractions of the state, while amnesty, on the other hand, are given to those persons who committed crimes against sovereignty of the state. So those are the difference between um, pardon and amnesty. There are only three things that you have to remember in, in amnesty. One is that it, has, it is a general pardon granted to a group of prisoners. Number two, this group of prisoners are political offenders. And number three, before it is exercised by the president, there has to be a concurrence coming from the Congress. Next is special time allowance for loyalty. Special time allowance for loyalty is a deduction of one-fifth of the period of the sentence of any prisoner who evaded the service of sentence on the occasion of disorders due to conflagrations, earthquakes, or other calamities shall be granted if he returns to authorities within 48 hours after the president declared that the calamity is over. Take note that what is required here is that even if the person was able to escape from the catastrophe, he has to return or he has to surrender again to authorities 
within a maximum of 48 hours. Because if he will surrender beyond 48 hours, he will no longer be allowed to avail on the special time allowance for loyalty. And if the person will surrender to authorities within 48 hours after the president declared that the calamity is over, automatically there will be a deduction of one-fifth of the period of the sentence of that prisoner. Last is good conduct time allowance. Good conduct time allowance is mandated under Republic Act 10592. We have the oldest law on good conduct time allowance, but right now our new law is Republic Act 10592. In the previous law, there is a lesser deduction from the years of sentence. In the new law, which is Republic Act 10592, there is a higher deduction of days from years of sentence to a person who exhibit good behavior inside prison. So in Republic Act 10592, if the person will exhibit good behavior within two years, there will be a deduction which is 20 days per month. If a person will exhibit good behavior from three to five years, the person will enjoy 23, 23 days per month deduction from his years of sentence. If the person will behave six to 10 years, he will enjoy 25 days deduction per month. And if he will exhibit good behaviors from 11 years and onwards, he will enjoy 30 days deduction per month. Also in Republic Act 10592, a convict shall be allowed another deduction of 15 days for each month of study, teaching, or mentoring service time rendered. So cadets, those are the remaining topics under non-institutional correction subject. And I hope by prayer and by God's grace, you can hurdle the board examination. 